Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. Now today I'm going to be talking about the Bel the not, not the Belgian that's next week's race, the Hungarian Grand Prix weekend for F1, F2, and F3. And before we get into that, let's now talk about Belgium uh, next week's uh, race for F1, F2, and F3. So first up was Formula One, so July twenty eighth, which is a Saturday. Saturday? Friday, Friday. F1 qualifying. F1 that's at 1.30 to 2.30, while qualifying outside at 5 o'clock to 6 o'clock. Then, on July 29th, will be the Sprint Shootout. Uh, so, Sprint Shootout, which is basically the qualifying for the Sprint Race, that will start at 12 o'clock to then, to then 12.44. And then the Sprint Race, that will start at 4.30 to 5.30. And then the race on a Sunday, on July 30th, will start at 3 o'clock. So, I'm pretty sure this is now the third, I think, maybe the th third or second race with a spring race. So, um, yeah, it's it's interesting, I'll say that at least. Uh, F2, practice and qualifying, both of them will be on a Friday. Uh, practice will start at 11.05 to 11.50 a.m. And the qualifying will start at 3.55 to then, to then 4.25. The sprint race on Saturday, that's at 1.45 to 2.30. And the feature race on a Sunday, that's at 10 o'clock to 10.45. And then F3, practice qualifying, once again, on a Friday. Practice outside at 9.55 to 10.40 a.m. Qualifying outside at 3 o'clock to 3.30. Spin race on a Saturday, that's at, at 10 a.m. to 10.45 a.m. And then the feature race on a Sunday, that's at 8.30 a.m. to 9.15 a.m. So, yeah, hopefully it's not a repeat of 20, to, oh, what was it, 2021? Um, where it was the, where the rain basically cancelled the race. Hopefully, hopefully it's not like that, but... Um, we shall see though. Let's now move over now to the F3 results at Hungary. For Formula 3, and we'll first start off with the sprint race here at Budapest in Hungary. That was won by Ga sorry, that was won by Gabriela Mini. And then we got Gabriel Bottoletto and and for the first time Nikita Bedrin getting his first podium for him and Jens Motorsports this year. And then for the top 10 we have Paul Aaron, Over uh sorry, Over Christian Mansell, Franco Colapinto, Johnny Edgar, uh, Gregoire Saucy, and Dino Bangnovic ran out the top 10. Only one thing I kind of want to talk about is um, on the first lap, I'm pretty sure on the first chicane, uh, Tommy Smith, I almost said Jack Smith for a second, Tommy Smith, he got launched up uh, he got launched up into the air. Think of, it kind of reminded me a bit of um, Hamilton and, and Alonso, pretty sure in Belgium last year. So it's pretty similar to their, to their record. Oh, I can't show it because of copyright issues. So yeah, so just imagine it of Hamilton and Alonso's little, little collision in Belgium last year, but with Formula 3 cars and the first lap of the race. So you can obviously understand how hectic it was. I'm pretty sure like someone also like spun out as well um, <laughs> um, before it happened and... Uh, and then Tommy Smith just got launched up into the air. I don't know who, but I can't remember uh, who was it, but um, yeah, it is what it is, I guess. And um, let's now move over now to the feature race. And then that was won by Zach O'Sullivan, obviously our pole sitter for the feature race. And we got Dino Bangnovich and Franco Colapinto around, ran around, around the podium, making it a Prima 1 2. And then, we, and then for the other uh, finishes. Um, we have Franco Colapin, sorry, um, we have Oliver Gothi in 4th place, and Paul Aaron, Pepe Marti, Gabriel Bortoletto, John Yedgar, Leon Leonardo Fonaroli, and Maria Boya, right now the top 10. Uh, the race was actually shortened to 19 laps, just like the sprint race, that was because of Tire Deg. Tire Deg was a massive talking point, uh, throughout the Formula 3 paddock, and we kind of saw it as well in the sprint race, where the tires just, just absolutely destroy pretty sure maybe about like lap 8 or something, it was, it, it was gone, it was gone just like that, so, yeah, so, I'm, what was the lap supposed to be, maybe like 23 maybe, maybe even 25, I'm not really too sure what the lap was, like, was supposed to be, but, uh, it was shortened to 19 laps, the same length basically as the sprint race. So they basically had two sprint races, but um, one gave out more points than the other. So yeah, I mean, a, 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 it's definitely a skill that these that these drivers especially need to need to uh, master, which obviously uh, keeping tire degradation to a minimum. Obviously, just looking after your tires and all that other stuff. So. 
it's, it's it is something that some of these drivers need to get used to. Uh, but luckily there wasn't any. I, I don't think there was any massive tire failures, which at least was a good sign. But um, still, uh, pretty. It was it was interesting nonetheless. Um, and then let's now move over now to the driver standings, which I forgot to do for the top ten. But here we are. Uh, we have Gabriel Bordaletto, who has a massive lead, a 43-point lead over Zach O'Sullivan, who now moves up to second place, but behind, um, in front of Pepe Marti. One point difference between both O'Sullivan and Marti. Then we got Paul Aaron, Dino Benovic, both of them are tied for fourth place. One point behind them is Franca Colapinto in sixth place. Gabriel Mini, then a pretty, de a pretty decent gap uh, to Oliver Gorothy, Leonardo Fonaroli, and Greg, Bar and, and Greg Watt Saucy. Right now, the top 10. Uh, so with that out of the way, let's now talk about the F2 sprint, uh, sprint and feature race for Hungary. For the Formula 2 weekend for sprint and the feature race, the sprint race before we start off with, that was won by Dennis Halger, and then Ayumi Owasa and Oliver Behrman right now at the podium. And then for the top 10, we have Teo Porcher, Jihan Davala, Kush Maini, Victor Martins, Isaac Hadjo, Frederick Vesti, and Jack Dewan right now at the top 10. One thing I want to talk about is Ralph Boschong. He had a collision with Clement Neverlack and on to turn one. Pretty sure, I'm pretty sure Neverlack locked up uh, coming to turn one. Hit Boschong and Arthur Leclerc was also involved uh, in it as well. So that calls that uh, yes, yeah, so that calls Ralph Boschong to retire from the race. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the only retirement in the race and there may be, you know, it's like one more driver which I cannot remember on the top of my head. But uh, that was what happened to Ralph Boschong, and nothing really else really happened in this race. I mean, nothing really else really. Um, like, like there was, I, 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 I can't think of anything else really to say about the sprint race for F2. It was just kind of just a, a regular normal sprint race for Formula 2. That's really all. Uh, as for the feature race, so that was won by Jack Dewan, his first win of the season, and also the first as well for Invicta Virtuosi Racing. And then we got, uh, and then we got Frederick Vesti and Victor Martins ran at the podium. And then for the other drivers, we have uh, we have Ayumi Owasa, Isaac Hajja, Taylor Porcher, Dennis Halger, and Sofita Pauli, and the two Van Amersfoort drivers, Juan Manuel Carrera and Richard Vishaw, in 9th and 10th, ran at the top 10. Uh, two things actually want to talk about. The first one is the alternative strategies that I'm pretty sure Wasa had. Uh, Wasa was on. Uh, Kush Mining was pretty, pretty sure was also on it. Roman Stanek was on it. Uh, those three drivers pretty sure started. I th oh, what did it start on? Maybe the mediums, I think. So they started on the mediums and then they went to the softs in the very end. And actually almost worked out for Wasa. I'm pretty sure he was, uh, he passed, like, Porcher, um, and even Hadja as well to get to fourth place, but couldn't, but couldn't pass, uh, Victor Martin, sadly. Um, as for the other ones, they were, they weren't really in contention of possibly getting some points. Um, like, Sanic, he was way off, and Mighty spun out, like, on, like, on, like, the final lap in turn one. Um, because he wrote, because he wrote too much curb while trying to pass, uh, Jack Rawford. It was a bit of a hothead in that race as well. Wasn't making a lot of friends, especially, um, Zane Maloney, who just ran him wide for some super reason. I don't know why, but that was pretty stupid from Crawford. Um, so he kind of needs to calm down after that. Um, nothing really else. And actually, one thing I'll, actually, I just realized, one thing I will talk about is the ART teammates, Victor Martins and Terra Porcher. Basically, since Porcher is in the championship hunt, and, um, you know, his main objective is to finish in front of Frederick Vesti, or even, or at least just outscore Vesti. Um, he was having a, little, a bit of a ding-dong battle against his own teammate, Victor Martins, and, uh, come, and, and, and uh, well, what, what, I'm going to try to think of the, what's the turn right now on top of my head. Pretty sure it's turn five, I think, the, the fastest left-hander. Um, he, uh, he, Martins actually... He pushed poor chair wide, and that just that caused him as well to lose the position to as like Hadja, and he couldn't even uh, repass Hadja sadly. So his championship is has been has been hit a bit, um, but he's still second place in the championship, so it's not really too bad. Speak of that, let's have a look now at the championship now for F two. Uh, it is getting uh, pretty spicy, we'll say. Only eleven points now separating Frederick Vesti and Terra Poor Chair. 
Then we have and then we have Ayumi Owasa, Victor Martens, Jack Dewin, Oliver Behrman, Dennis Halger, Richard Bishaw, Enzo Fittipaldi, and Zay Maloney ran out the top ten. So it's getting pretty tight as we head over to Spa for the next race for F2. So with that away, let's now talk about Formula One. And the result at Hungary for Formula One winner, Max Verstappen. Who saw that coming? Second place there is Lando Norris, then we got Sergio Perez, Lewis Hamilton, Oscar Piastri, George Russell, Charles Leclerc, Carl Sainz, Fernando Alonso, and Lars Stroll ran out, ran out of the top 10. Then we have Antonio Albon, Valtteri Bottas, welcome back Daniel Ricciardo, Nico Hulkenberg, Yuki Tsunoda, Joe Guan Yu, Kevin Magnussen, Logan Sargin, and the two Alpine drivers of Esteban Ocon and Pierre Gasly down in, in 19th and 18th place with the DNF. Obviously, the big thing, Ricardo has has replaced Nick DeVries. Um, this was... I hate to say this, but this was not really a surprise to me at all. As much as I hate seeing drivers getting replaced, especially especially in F1, since there's like there's those literally 20 seats in Formula 1. Um, uh, I'm, I'm not too sure because the race is, he's obviously a rookie. And always, and obviously he, he had that massive, that, that, that massive performance with Williams in Monza of last year, where he finished, when he finished P9, and obviously got two points for the team. So I do feel I I feel extremely bad for Nick DeVries because I hate that I hate seeing the driving game replace and stuff. However, at the same time, if they want to pressure Perez or even Sonoda, even of at least getting a Red Bull seat, they need to have a an experienced driver to challenge both of them. Uh, because Perez he actually crashed on qualifying, and Perez is, and Perez moves up six spots from where he was in P nine. Obviously, the, uh, the driver on the move was George Russell after starting 18th place, while the driver who lost the most positions were you, was, was Joe Guan Yu, who, who started 5th place. Uh, basically, maybe probably took him 3 seconds to get off the gr to get off the grid, and then locked up Miranda Ricardo, who then rear-ended the two Alpines of Pierre Gasly and Esteban Ocon. Obviously, not Ocon or Gasly's fault, uh, they were just innocent bystanders, so that's fair enough, but... um. Yeah, really, really unlucky there for the Alpines. This is, I'm pretty sure, just not a second race, I think, that these two have collided. Um, obviously, this time, not their fault. It was, it was, it was obviously Joe locking up and hitting Ricardo, which is basically just a, just a continuous effect. Um, but still really, really unlucky for the two Alpines. And, yeah, Ocon could have possibly, like, got it maybe, it may be into the points even. Um, but, yeah, it's just it's just unlucky, really, for for uh, Ocon and Gaz. Like, I don't know. I don't even know what happened to Logan Sargent. I'm guessing it was like I'm guessing it was uh, I don't know maybe an engine failure. Maybe I'm not really too sure what happened to him. I'll be honest, but I do know that Ocon and Gasly, um, they were obviously out based on lap one because of um because of Joe locking up. So yeah, pretty unlucky there for for those two. And um, Sargent was the DNF in because of something. I'm not really too sure what happened to him. But that is the race results. Um, Retirement as well. Gasly, Lock, uh, Gasly, Ocon, and Sargent. Fastest pit stop we don't really know. The fastest lap went to Verstappen. Who who knew? Drive data was actually pretty close. Actually went to Sergio Perez. Interesting. Only um, a very close 0.3% of, of the vote separated between him and Landon Norris. Then we got Oscar Piastri, George Russell, and Max Verstappen. Shout out, oh, sorry, shout out to Oscar Piastri as well for being up to like second place into like well, I don't know. Lap 15, maybe? He's definitely a very good driver. Um, there was a bunch of um, deleted lap times because of track limits and stuff. Um, penalties. The, uh, we would ignore qualifying because no one really cares about qualifying. The race, uh, we also have Zhou Guan Yu. Uh, for causing a collision, he now has he has he got a 5 second time penalty. That was literally with the collision that he had with Ricardo and ended up the retirements of, of the two Alpines. And two penalty points. He now has four penalty points. And a five second time penalty as well for Charles Leclerc uh, for speeding in the pit lane. <clears throat> Pretty sure the pit lane limit is 80 kilometers an hour. Uh, so he basically went 0.7 over it. So five second time penalty for Charles Leclerc. And Leclerc, what did he finish? He finished his seventh place. So yeah, I don't think it really meant much. I'm pretty sure he was behind Russell either way, but I might be wrong about that. And let's now have a look at the driver standings right after it. 
Um, this is what it looks like right here. I can't really fit any, any everyone because Ricardo he's out in twenty first place. Nothing really changes for him there. Uh, but for, so Max Verstappen still in the lead, just giving the championship already for God's sakes. Sergio Perez, Fernando Alonso, Lewis Hamilton, George Russell, Carlos Sainz, Charles Leclerc, Lando Norris, Lance Stroll, and Espen Ocon round, round out of the top ten. Obviously, George Russell and Lando Norris both of them move up, move up a spot, while Carlos Sainz and Lance Stroll. Uh, both of them move down. As for the constructors, we have Red, we have Red Bull Racing scene still in the lead. The Mercedes, Aston Martin, Ferrari, McLaren, Alpine, Williams, Haas, both of them tied uh, for seventh. Both Williams and Haas, both, both with eleven points. Alfa Romeo and Alfa Tari down in tenth place. And if you really wanted to know, there's Daniel Ricciardo down there in twenty first place uh, with zero points. So just a reminder that next week's race for F1 will be the Belgian Grand Prix for Formula One, Formula Two, and Formula 3. So that's, so that's really bad for me. Obviously, like, comment, subscribe. It would really help me. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.